Hey all, Tabs here. We are back today playing some more Planet Zoo. Uh, so we're back in the dome. I think this is episode six um, in the in my tropical dome. Um, and we're starting out the speed build with a bit that was in the previous episode, but sort of finishing this area off. So if you saw the previous episode, um, thank you very much firstly for watching, but um, you'll have noticed I sort of started this educational area um, that was 10 facts about tapirs and I hadn't really put in the put in the actual details of that so now we're working on that um, all of these are going to be available on the workshop for you to play around with I'm quite happy with the way they came out um, I'll have to explain them all in the real time section you won't see that much of this you're just sort of seeing a bit of a bit of an intro to that area um, and now we're moving on to the actual kind of substance of this episode um, so the anteater, so I haven't put the anteater in, I haven't used the anteater before, uh, so I'm quite happy with it as an animal, it's quite interesting looking, it's um, kind of fun, kind of fits into the um, into the dome as well, um, obviously there's not loads of animals going to go in here, but this, this one I think works quite well. So we're just kind of extending this area on a little bit, keep checking the path, put a viewing platform in. Um, and you'll see when we actually get into building the habitat that this is this is a habitat that will only be viewable really only viewable from this side of the dome um so i'm not i'm there's i think there's two viewing areas what i'm trying to do is have multiple viewing areas for each habitat but both quite small um so borrowing some of the rock work just to break up borrow this from the other side and um, continue that theme you keep seeing me check the path there because obviously I've got the path hidden I have to make sure that I'm um, not overlapping it because uh, I really one of the things I really don't like is when you see guests clipping into clipping into objects and stuff and you'll find that quite often um, they kind of clip out the edges of the path sometimes so I tend to try and make sure I give uh, give a bit of a clearance um, they won't walk outside of the edge of the path, but their arms and stuff will come sometimes clip outside of the edge of the path. Um, so we're going to be working on the island, um, which you'll see me working on in a second. But we're just putting in, again, trying to make sure it stays lush and there's plenty of foliage and stuff here. Um, so we keep using these kind of raised, raised flower beds. I've not got a load of space on this side, um, so it's a bit of a fiddle to kind of get enough foliage. So I've now dropped the anteater in, um, and if you watched the previous episode, I talked about how this is all one habitat. So I I want I want to only have one access, a one staff access point onto this island because I don't want to have loads of bridges running across, but I want several different animals. Um, I think we're going to have a jaguar on this island at some point, or using a bit of this island. So I'm just sort of trying to suss out. Um, how I can do that and what I've done is I've divided up my intention was to divide up the the tapir the tapir section of this habitat from the anteater section of the habitat I'm just kind of at the moment in the speed build playing around looking at the sizes of how much I want to give it um, what I sort of decide is to go under the under the um, recommended amount but what I'll do is you'll see in a second is I use sort of different layers. So there's sort of different, even though the actual size of the habitat is below, um, because I think I've got, I have an up and a, upper and a lower level, if that makes sense. It makes sense when you see it. Um, then I think, I don't think the game recalculates based on that, but actually the surface area and the walkable space and stuff is, I think, within the, within the, um, the tolerance. Um, so yeah, putting in a, a bit of a barrier here. This was a bit of a fiddle because I want something low enough that the guests can see over, um, and but not uh, yeah, not something that they can jump over. So I've at this point realised that my intended kind of little rock. At, so there was supposed to be a little pathway through those rocks that the, that the staff member would use. I couldn't really get it to work because. I'll show you this in the real time section, but um, it would work. But I think what I'd end up with is a hole that's really vi obviously visible from one of the viewpoints. So I decide to sort of sneak in this little. Um, initially, I think I'm going to use like a plank for them to walk across. 
Um, and I think I talked about this in the last episode, but the, but but my because I'm basically I'm using the fact that the hitbox of the animal is different, or the hitboxes of the of the large tapirs and the large ant ant eater is different to the the staff member. So as long as I can keep the staff member, as long as I can keep the access or the clearance around this pathway, um, slightly larger than the staff member, but slightly smaller than the anteater, then the anteater won't be able to get through, or the tapirs, the large tapirs won't be able, the adult tapirs won't be able to get through, but the staff member will. Um, my one exception to that is the baby tapir. Um, when I started doing this idea, I thought I wasn't going to, to actually have an infant in here and then that wouldn't be a problem. Um, but the baby tapirs are so cute that I think I'm definitely going to keep it. So I was sort of accepting the fact that the baby can get into the anteater section. And it's actually quite fun because you see them kind of running around in there. It's very cute. Um, so now we're building, you see I've taken the water out there just to work on um, some of the some of this uh anteater section so it's got like a it's going to have like a bedding area in the habitat um so i'm raising up building kind of a raised concrete section there um and you see and i've deliberately kind of kept the concrete theme here and i'm kind of not hiding away um the fact that there's concrete entirely because i think it's sort of just realistic um to a zoo i'm getting slightly further away from the realism level i think in this habitat um because i do do a lot of you know there's a lot of stuff on the ground and a lot of ground clutter and and foliage and things to give just to soften the soften the edges up and stuff um so here we are just kind of again i'm deliberately making this this does get softened up quite a lot but deliberately making this kind of repetitive looking so it looks like it's it's not real and I'm keeping using these rocks because they look like they're not real um, as I said I think before I talked about them being they almost look like a set piece um, like a piece from a, a a stage or something but we do break them up a bit adding some some of the temperate rocks and some of the things some of the tropical rocks and the temple the temple rubble piece um, is really great for kind of breaking up the the edges and the, and the borders and stuff put some of those pieces those temple pieces in i've now got the sections you see i'm sort of checking to make sure that the aardvark can still get through or sorry the anteater can still get through um so yeah there's me adding some of that rubble stuff in then i'm starting to add some foliage into it again just to soften it a bit more check again that the anteater can still get through the hitboxes are quite big compared to the actual models of the animals so um, you have to kind of keep having to check it because you can't necessarily just visually look. Uh, we want a big kind of centerpiece tree in here so it doesn't get like there's too much of a gap in the canopy. Um, so adding, adding just a bit of detail to that. Don't do too much of this. Um, and actually this habitat I think probably needs um, by the end of the video and even by the end of the um, the, the real time section probably needs about another 15-20% of work to be done um and i'll go back and fiddle on it change some of that in the next in the next episode okay so now we're moving on to something that was actually inspired by something um i saw at london zoo quite a, i don't know if it's still there but quite a long long time ago that i saw it but they have this really cool um leaf cutter ant exhibit uh so again, this is a section that I think I'm sort of starting this episode um, and we'll finish in the next episode. Um, but yeah, I just thought it was quite a cool idea to have this. I mean, I'm, I don't know, maybe slightly sick, but <laughs> to have um, ants within sort of a view of the anteater uh, habitat. Uh, so they, so yeah, they have this really cool... Um, thing where you can kind of get close to the ants you see them all walking along a rope and sort of sticky ropes and, and leaves being carried along uh, by these ants and they kind of, kind of come out of the of the they're not just in a glass tank they come out and you can you can actually but if you wanted to you can put your hand on the on the rope it does there's big signs up everywhere saying these these ants do bite um so i 
yeah, I just thought it'd be an interesting little challenge to see how I can make this work. Um, obviously, there's not going to really going to be any actual ads, so it's all going to be sort of implied. Um, but I think it can work. I think it would be fun. Again, it's just a sort of um, extra little bit of um, educational educational stuff. It's really popular. It was really popular at, at London Zoo. That that thing you see all kids around it. They're you know, taking photographs and watching these amazing little ants carrying stuff. Um, so, yeah, the initial stage of this is just kind of a, is like a glass box, really. Um, and then it is going to have, I haven't 100% worked out how I'm going to do it, but, um, you yeah, know, ropes coming out and, you yeah, know, the implied idea of there being ants crawling across it and things. So we're coming to the end of the speed build, guys. Um, and, yeah, as usual, there will be a real-time section where I walk around I'll show you all the tapir stuff and um, talk you through the my kind of crazy 10 tapir facts uh, so yeah um, do stay tuned for that guys thank you very much for watching to this point and I shall see you very soon Okay, peeps, welcome back. Thank you very much for sticking around. I have to say, these are always my favourite, my favourite bits of the videos, when we kind of get to walk around together. Uh, so we're gonna try. To, I, the thing I always have to remember is when I make these, I have to remember all the bits I've changed <laughs> since I last showed you guys. So the reason I quite often start. Um, right back at the beginning or right back towards near where the entrance is is because I'm trying to remember I'm trying to spot anything that I know that I've added since you last saw it and um, this suit and um, the park file and all that sort of stuff is all up on the is all up on the workshop though so you guys can check it all out ah so the first thing we're going to come to is we'll go that way in a minute towards the tapir stuff but um, I changed this I changed this wall section and things here slightly. So this was all open up here before so I closed that all in. Um, and I've actually now made there a point. If we can get up here, it's sometimes a bit difficult in, in Tejid Cam. But I've now given this whole section a, a point. Um, so this was here before. Uh, but now you can step down and you can see the tape ears a bit more from that way. You see a little, how cutie little spotty dude darting around. For some reason it doesn't let me path around very easily up here, so it, it will be a bit, a little bit clanky. And I'm hoping you're not hearing my keyboard clanking too much. Um, so there is the little view down into the bedding area for those guys, and then there's the view over towards the anti to habitat. Yeah, so we'll go around there in a second, but yeah, a little bit of education things. I think this will be a really cool spot actually, because you'll be able to see once this is all filled out, you'll be able to see a lot more down that way. So yeah, quite happy with that little section. Um, and as I said, I don't really understand why it's got no path up here, so maybe it just doesn't, it doesn't like it uh, us moving around up there too much. So apologies for the slight jankiness on the camera there. I'm still loving this view to say this. I think this this now I've tidied this edge up's come together really well. So our ten facts about tapirs or ten things about tapirs. Are you ready for this? <laughs> so these are all real. Um, I've slightly been a bit playful with the the wording and things, and obviously the idea is supposed to be that it's that there's some say more detailed text and things. Um, so tape. This is the one that was in the last one. Uh, so the actual translation or the literal translation of tapir 
Um, and it's from, I got a few people ask me in the last video what language this is from. Or I think maybe when I posted this on Reddit, actually, a few people asked me what language it was from. Um, so it's from it's from an, a, a native Brazilian language that the word tapir comes from. Um, I think it's Portuguese they speak in Brazil. Um, I've a, I might be an idiot there. Spanish or Portuguese. Um, so I think this is not. Um, it's an it's an indigenous uh, indigenous word or from the indigenous Brazilian language. One of one of those. Um, let me know what that is in in the comments below. Um, and then, and sort of linked to that is the fact that actually, interesting enough, tapirs are one of the oldest primates um, that we have on the planet, and they're they're thought to be around twenty twenty. Sorry, not primates, mammals, and they're thought to be around twenty million years old. So that's quite interesting. So this is a sort of little gesture of a of a of a timeline. Um, despite what you kind of believe from their appearances, they're actually closer related to horses. Um, than they are to pigs they've got a sort of I guess they've got a sort of pig like look to them but they're actually closer to horses and, and closer to rhinos um, than they are to pigs which I thought was quite cool um, they have this weird thing where they've got four toes on um, it's either the front feet or the back feet I've got four toes and then the the, the, the opposite one so the, I think it's that I think it's that the front feet the front two legs have got four toes on, uh, three toes on them, and the back two legs have got four toes on them, which is really odd. It's sort of an odd combination of things. Um, you'll obviously they have um, little personal snorkel, so they have the their uh, their snout like thing. They have, they apparently use quite often if they're in distress or they're running away from a predator, they'll go into the water and they can use that. Um, snout to breathe so like a little <laughs> little secret snorkel um, Twilight fans so they are actually um, they're not nocturnal specifically but they are seen mostly and most active um, either in dawn or in dusk so yeah, mostly like the twilight oh well, here's how yeah to show you a bit more detail of this as well so just did a bit of a bit of dressing um, I think this is this is finished now. I'd say everything back to the entrance from here. I'd say it's pretty finished. Oh, it's cool to see some guests knocking around. I've only let a few in because uh, I'm a bit precious. Um, so carrying on. So this is the one probably everyone would know. So um, the calves have different coloration on them. Um, and it's thought that the reason they have that is to give them better camouflage. In the wild so as they get bigger and actually um, tapirs are really heavy so they've got quite strong animals um, but obviously the the infants are, are vulnerable and so they get the extra they get that spotting and it's thought to be um, like a form of, of infant camouflage um, fruit and veg so they they are um, herbivores um, and they eat so they only fruit and veg float <laughs> this is a little bit of a bit of a weird one so I found out that they Apparently they will quite often, if they're in areas where they believe there are predators, they will quite often poo in the water in order to um, hide the smell. So in order for it to not be as easy for those predators to find them, they'll they'll actually go into the, into the water and do their business. <laughs> so that worked. And then the last one is obviously if you've if you've hatched them in the, in your game, you'll hear that they're amazing. They look like a little whistle little whistly noise they use um so yeah give a little whistle but so that is all the tapir business and then you finish this tapir area i need to do some more decoration on the floor and stuff here um and there across there is our anteater habitat oh and there he is right on cue as i said it needs some work i had deliberately haven't kind of worried about that end because i need to work out how I'm going to integrate that oh that's cool you can see the monkeys dropping jumping over in the background so we'll go into the actual habitat in a second I'll show you a bit more detail yeah that's super cool got that little sight line there obviously that was deliberate yeah and so I'm try sort of trying to deliberately leave the windows or the gaps that the, um, the guests have to be sort of fairly small like they're not I'm not making a big 
Like I didn't want to run the whole, you know, a whole viewing area down this section. So yeah, just one anteater in there at the moment. Um, so we'll scoot round, go back. And this is a bit of a mess in here at the moment, but I need to tie this up. So back inside the, the night house, I need to tidy all these bits away. Um, so I'll show you just for, I'll just show you for a second. Um, I had a dude sleeping. So if you look, see where that viewing point is. So I'm just going to explain why I didn't do the thing I was originally going to do. So my original plan was there to be a gap um, between these two rocks. I did leave that little that little space, and you know I've sort of implied that there is a way through there, um, and that was going to be how I got the um, the keeper through, but not the the, the adults, either the adult tapirs or the adult anteaters. Um, but what I found was in order to make that gap big enough. It made it more and more vis like visible from from the point over there because you can't use the gates because you can't actually use the gates and you can't use a, a, an obstacle like that they won't come through that door and um, it had to be open and therefore I'd end up with this sort of hole through. Um, if it had been different, yeah, if it had been properly arranged a bit different or I hadn't already done this rock work, I may well have just made a corner. Or maybe I'll think about that in the in the next um, access way but so yeah I just added this kind of little this little bridge basically um, and this idea of there being like a little gate and some, you know, some pretty rubbish but basic hinges um, so the keeper will come through here or any luck we'll see the keeper come through at some point uh, but as I said um, that the baby can get across there so you might see him come flying across in a minute playing around over here um yeah so that end of it obviously all needs some work and i think it as i said i think it needs about another 10 or 20 percent of fiddling around and you know getting it right in here but yeah pretty happy with that so far um once that's filled out obviously that'll be a big difference but guests won't see it from this side anyway so uh we are getting the sneak preview um, and then the last bit to show really is if we go up here. So this is all, obviously this is for the, the anteater, but you will get, guests would get a view from there, I guess. And I think I'm going to leave that open because I want to, I want the guests to be able to see or have it you know, as a viewing section. I'd love the, the, the guests to be able to see the monkeys running across that bridge and stuff because I think that's a really cool feature. So they'll get in the background. Um, a view of the anteaters on his little on his little platform. Um, oh, right on cue. They're so cold, man. We've just got like a. I love the fact that they're really slow and they kind of just lumber around. What are you doing? You gonna play with the ball? He hasn't yet pushed it over there, but I'm guessing he can. Um, also quite cool. Sort of accidentally didn't. Well, I didn't, didn't really do this deliberately, but um, if you have a big steep drop like this, they won't try and escape over it. Like, he, he isn't ever going to, it doesn't show that as an escapable area. Um, so that's something to bear in mind for future builds, I think, is that, whereas that one I had to put a barrier along, um, if you, if they have to drop a long way, they won't just jump over there. Um, potentially unless they're a climber or or a or a miracle monkey like that one is. So yeah, I think that's pretty much it guys. Um I think it's he's doing all of the show for us. So yeah, once we've got all of this in, I think this is probably gonna be our other viewing section here. Um and we'll just zoom back over there and I'll show you the ant thing. So let's go yoink. So as I said, this needs to be finished. Um, I need to be conscious of the light in this dome. So the light, my sun is over there, comes up from kind of that direction, goes over the top. But you see, we've got a lot of shade in the canopy now. So I want to make sure we've still got uh, enough light coming into this. So I'm probably going to have to put some glass in the roof or something. And then I think the plan is to be that there'll be ropes running across here, or maybe at least on the outside of it. 
So yeah, I think that is it for now, guys. Do let me know what you think. Um, and I'm happy to take any suggestions or ideas from peeps as well. So yeah, thank you very much for watching. Do appreciate it very much. Um, and I shall catch you guys on the next one. Take it easy.